Hi y'all, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com and today I am here with a men's necktie. I think that this project would be a lot of fun for a holiday photo shoot. So let me show you what I learned while crafting this tie. I took an old tie that my husband no longer used and I carefully took that apart with a seam ripper. I thought it would be fun to use a home decor weight. So for this, I don't think I am going to use the interfacing because it is nice and thick, okay? So when you're cutting out the pieces for your tie, they're going to have to be cut on the bias and that's so that you can take advantage of that extra stretch in the fabric. And so if you're not familiar with bias cutting, you just take your fabric and fold it in a triangle and then identify where it stretches, which should be on your fold there and cut at that angle. This does require more fabric. For one necktie, I got away with a half a yard of cotton fabric, but I was really careful in how I placed that. So to be safe, I suggest you buy a yard of fabric and then you won't be caught in a situation where you're just a smidgen short, okay? So I wanna cut out the largest piece of the tie, which I have folded in half and pressed. So I'm just going to position my fold on the fold of the fabric here and then pin that in place and cut out that long piece there. And then I'm gonna refold the fabric on the bias and cut out the remaining pieces. I also folded this one in half, but it has a slightly different angle at the top. So you're going to have to shape that by hand when you get to the top of that, okay? So I'm gonna cut out my pieces and then I'm gonna show you how to put together the tie. So we're going to begin by attaching the accent pieces. And if your pattern piece for the accent is not the exact same measurement as your tie, go ahead and true that up because I found that it was easier to have those pieces be the same size. So I'm just going to take my accent fabric and attach that to the front side of the tie and I'm going to stitch using an eighth of an inch seam allowance around that accent piece. I'm gonna leave the top unstitched so that I can turn that around and press it. And here, every time I reach a corner, I'm putting the needle down and pivoting so that that tie has nice sharp points. I did back stitch at the top of that and then I'm just going to flip that around, poke out that corner nice and neat and press it flat at the iron. One of the turning tools that comes with the polyfill fluff is great for poking out that little corner. This is what it looks like on the back side and the front side. And then we're going to do the same thing with the front of the tie. Just position that accent fabric right side facing and then stitch along the side and the point and back up the side, reinforcing with the back stitch. Turn that around and press nice and flat. Okay, and that's what the back side of the front of the tie looks like. And then the front side, and you can see that's a nice, neat 
point there. Okay, so now you want to connect all three pieces using your little connector triangle. It's a little tricky, so you want to work with these shorter sides of the triangle. That should be what's getting attached to the tie. But just pin that in place and then do a quick little fold over and see, it should be looking like a continuation. If it doesn't and it's angled sharply, then you're attaching at the wrong place. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach this along the short side of the triangle to the front of the tie. So it is a little tricky, again, just play with that with the pins so you can save yourself some frustration. So now I'm gonna stitch along there. piece in place and attached and the next thing that I'm going to do is press these seams open so the next step is to take this edge on both sides and press in a quarter inch hem all the way around so just go nice and slow and press all the way around so you have a good hem. I have pressed in my quarter inch, maybe a little larger hem, all the way around the tie. And then the fun part is you take those edges and you fold them over. And this is where you can style this if you want a skinnier tie, a little fatter tie. You have some freedom there in your folding and overlapping. The only thing that you do want to make sure of is that your points are symmetrical there and you have a nice, attractive, even point on the front of that tie. I really love the look of this. There's a little bit of linen on the back with the accent and then this is just a home decor fabric. I didn't use any interfacing on that and it has a really nice feel. Okay, so you're going to go all the way down your tie there, pressing that over and the neckline on mine gets pretty skinny, which I actually think would be really comfortable. So now what you have to do is either hand stitch up this opening or use a little bit of stitch witch, I think they call it, which is just um, fusible tape there that you would put all along that hem and then iron this shut. And what you could do is use the fusible tape to secure the fold and then come in and just put a few hand stitches in. If you're making this tie for a child or it's just for one occasion, like we talked about the Christmas photo, you could machine stitch that and you know, just add some detail in there. And again, it would just be a design element. If you're going to give this to someone you know, as a gift and you hope that they'll wear it often, you'll wanna take the time and hand stitch that seam close. But overall, I think this is a really sharp, good looking gift. And I am excited to see your custom ties over on the group Facebook page. So I hope you enjoyed this project. I will be back next week with another inspired handmade gift idea. Until then, as always, the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. 
I hope you all have an awesome week. Thank you so much for spending this time with me.